Hi, and welcome to lab. Today we're going to be doing experiment seven, oxidation reduction titrations. I'd like you to be my lab partner. I'd also like you to follow along in the lab manual. The first step says to obtain about 80 milliliters of potassium permanganate solution. It's a beautiful purple solution when it first comes out of the bottle. Uh, when it dries, it becomes a very ugly brown color. So I'm glad we're wearing lab coats and gloves. I'll need to normalize my burette with the solution. And I'll do that and fill it. And you obtain about between 0.6 and 0.8 grams of the more salt in the balance room. I'd like you to read the burette reading of the potassium permanganate solution. It's very difficult to read because it's a dark solution, but if you try, you'll get a pretty good reading. Next, I'll add the salt, the more salt that was weighed out. I'll add that to an Erlenmeyer flask. And I'll add some DI water to it, about 40 milliliters. Again, the amount does not make a whole lot of difference because it doesn't have uh, any acid or base in a DI water. We're just trying to get the volume up so that we can see a color change. We'll also add five pipettfuls of sulfuric acid. Now, this is a redox reaction, and it happens to need to be an acidic solution, and so we just add a little bit of acid. We'll swirl it, and hopefully most of that more salt is dissolved. And I'm going to, again, just wash down the walls of the flask, if there are any molecules of that more salt attached to the walls, we'll put it in the solution. And I will titrate as we did in the last lab. Adding slowly. And here we're just using the more salt to determine the molarity of the potassium permanganate here. In this reaction, potassium permanganate is its own indicator. When it's in solution reacting with the more salt, it's MN2+, plus, which is essentially colorless and the moment that all your more salt has been used up, the only thing that's left is the purple potassium permanganate, and you'll get a faint pink color in your Erlenmeyer flask. And I'll go dropwise now. Getting ready to shut this off at any minute like that. We were very close. Touch the tip to the inside wall of the flask. And then wash down the inside of the flask with DI water. And our titration is done. Let's read the final burette reading. I've just rinsed this Erlenmeyer flask once with tap water and once with deionized water. So let's do a second determination of the potassium permanganate molarity. Can you please get us another sample of more salt?
We'll take our initial burette reading as our final burette reading from the first titration. And then I will add the Moore's salt to the Erlenmeyer flask. And add some DI water, making sure I'm washing down that Moore's salt that got stuck to the sides of the Erlenmeyer flask. and five pipettfuls of sulfuric acid. I'll swirl it a little bit to dissolve the salt. and I will start titrating again. I'll stop a little bit before I'm done with the titration and wash anything that has adhered to the sides of the walls, whether it be KMNO4 or the Moore salt. In the next part of this experiment, we are going to determine the percent peroxide in this unknown sample of peroxide. We will first weigh an Erlenmeyer flask and then add about 10 milliliters of the peroxide unknown to it and reweigh it. We'll do that at the balance, and I'd also like you to read the initial burette reading. Now, one word of caution here, hydrogen peroxide decomposes quickly when exposed to light and air. So we'll have to work quickly during this part of the experiment. We'll add about 30 milliliters of DI water. And we'll add about 10 milliliters, again, five pipettfuls. The volumes of these are not terribly important. The volume of water is just to get us able to visually see the color and the sulfuric acid is because is necessary because it's a redox reaction we'll titrate as before I'm going to stop the titration right now, touch the tip of the burette to the inside of the flask. And 
and wash down any of the hydrogen peroxide sample and the or the uh, permanganate solution right down and now I can go drop wise. Getting ready to shut this off at any minute. Use the uh, water bottle, get all this in solution. And it appears I have just hit the equivalence point. Wash the walls of the flask. I got a piece of white paper to put under it so we can see the color better. I wash the walls of the flask of any permanganate solution. And that's a beautiful titration. Let's read the burette. We need to make a second determination of the percent hydrogen peroxide in the solution. So I'll rinse my Erlenmeyer flask out with, DI wa with tap water and then DI water. And then we'll go and reweigh it, add some more hydrogen peroxide solution, and then weigh it again. Let's do that in the balance room. Okay, I've got a approximately 10 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide unknown in here. I will add about 30 milliliters of DI water and 10 pipettefuls, 5 pipettefuls, about 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid. And we'll assume that our final burette reading from the first determination will be our initial determine, initial burette reading for this determination. And I've added the sulfuric acid. We're ready to titrate. Again, since I know I'm going to need quite a bit, I'll drain a lot at a very fast rate. It's about the same mass of peroxide. And then at some point, pretty soon, I will go dropwise. And I will touch the tip of the burette to the inside of the flask and again rinse down this flask, getting any peroxide or permanganate. And now I'll go dropwise. wise. 
Looks like it's taking a little bit longer for the permanganate to disappear. So I'm probably getting pretty close. I'm going to stop right now and wash my flask down. Start going dropwise again. are done with our titration. It's all of that down. And let's read the burette again. Well, we're done with our experiment now. Now we need to clean up. It's really important to clean this burette thoroughly because the KMNO4 solution stains. So be sure you rinse it multiple times with DI water. Uh, sometimes even removing the stopcock and rinsing that is good also. And then, of course, you'll fill it up with DI water, drain it, flip it, and open the stopcock. All of our solutions here can go right to the drain and then put all the equipment in the center so the next group is ready to use it. Thank you for being my lab partner today.